You know, it's written in the good book that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Well, you know, Emerson said that was the law of laws. And he said if that law didn't exist, we should invent it. I'm Bob Proctor, and I want to talk to you about the law of compensation. I first learned the law of compensation from Earl Nightingale. Earl Nightingale explained it probably better than anywhere I've ever read it. Now, I've read Emerson's essay on compensation, and we, of course, have the law of compensation here in this Working with the Law series. But the law of compensation is a law that we must understand. And we must understand it if we're going to apply it. And when we do apply it, we're going to find that the universe is very friendly towards us. The law of compensation is based on three steps. The amount of money or good you receive is going to be in direct ratio to the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. I want you to think about that for a moment. The amount of money or the good you receive in life is going to be based on just three points. The need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there will be in replacing you. You see, I quickly learned that there is a phenomenal need for what we do in our business. People are confused. People do not understand the laws. People are are watching to what's going on in the world. We're dealing in a very fast-changing world. We're not dealing, the world's not getting bigger, the world's getting smaller. We're, We're dealing in a world market today. You're only just a touch of a button away from anywhere in the world. We can look and watch what's going on on the opposite side of the world on a television set that's strapped to our wrist the size of a watch. Hit a button today and we send a message to a million people all at once and they get it wherever they are with email. Think of how the world has changed. It's changing so dramatically. And you know what it's looking for? It's looking for effective people. That's right. Everybody wants someone to serve them. Now think, is there a need for what you do? I would suggest there probably is. There's probably a great need for what you do. And you didn't even have to do anything to create that need. It's there. The second step is your ability to fill that need. How good are you at doing what you do? That's so important we understand that. Most people just do enough to get by. It's been often said that most people work just diligently enough so they don't get fired, and the company pays them just enough so they won't quit. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's in violation of the law of compensation. See, the second step, your ability to do it, is going to take care of the third step if you do the second step right, the difficulty there is in replacing you. When you become so effective at what you do, You're very difficult to replace. That's when your stock goes up. You will find that there will be people waiting in the wings to hire you, to pay you to go and work for them. When you perform your task to the very best of your ability, or when you are through your work and you do it well, you infallibly bring out the best there is in you. Now, you see... I learned a long time ago that if I make up my mind, I'm going to learn how to communicate this more effectively all the time, then my income is going to keep going up. My customers are going to keep coming. Now, we have people come to us from all over the world. That is not an accident. That is by design, and it's by law. Now, you might ask where you live. I live in Toronto, in Canada. Now, my office is in Phoenix, but I have other offices around the world, and I work with people all over the world. But how did you and I come together? I'm going to suggest that you and I came together because I made a decision many years ago that I was never going to stop attempting to improve the service I render. And hopefully, I would attract people like you into my life because I was giving the very best I've got and always trying to do it better. See, every day I study. I study every day. Now, I've been doing this since 1961. Prior to 1961, I never studied. Never did anything. I just tried to get by. And, of course, I didn't do very well. I was earning just a little bit of money, and I was in debt over my head. And um, 
I had a difficult time finding work. Today, I don't have a difficult time finding work. I have a difficult time hiding from it from periodically. But we work all over the world. Why? Well, three steps. Love compensation. The need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. Now, if you make up your mind that, and understand that you have infinite potential, no one knows what you're capable of doing. The most erudite science alive will not even guess at what you're capable of doing. As far as energy is concerned, we've studied this many ways, you've got about 11 million kilowatt hours per pound potential energy locked up in the electrons in the atoms of your body. Your brain is an electronic switching station that boggles the mind of the wisest. Your central nervous system is the most phenomenal electrical system in the entire universe. It would make a supercomputer look like a toy. Do you know that the blood circulates through hundreds of miles of passageway every 33 seconds, just like that? It carries all the food in, all the garbage out in one sweeping change. Have you ever stopped and thought about the power that you represent? You've got all these mental faculties. You can tap into an infinite source of supply. Listen, when we talk about you, we're talking about something that is awesome. The highest form of creation on the planet. That's what you and I are. Now, are we using it? Well, for many years I didn't. My whole idea was just get by. But then I started to study this material, and it started to make sense. And I thought, I'm going to change. I'm going to change how I'm living. And I got into Earl Nightingale's material. Now, I got into Napoleon Hill first, then into Earl Nightingale's. And I began to study it. And I got into this law of compensation. Then I read Emerson's essay on compensation. Then I got into um, Raymond Hollywell's material on compensation. It's all telling us the same thing. It's up to you. It's up to you. The universe will give you whatever you ask for. But you ask in the form of providing service. You see, you get back exactly what you put out. You put a lot out, you get a lot back. We are raised with the misconception that you go to work to earn money. You don't go to work to earn money. Working is the very worst way to earn money. We have a company called the Chairman's Club. And the Chairman's Club is designed for one thing, to show people how to earn money. You just go to uh, Life Success or LSChairmansClub.com. LifeSuccessChairmansClub.com. And look it up. That, that's the sole purpose of it. And in that club, we show people how to earn money, how to set up multiple sources of income. But the whole thing is based on providing service. You've got to provide service. See, the concept behind the club is that you can earn so much money when you're sleeping, you can do whatever you want when you're awake. Now, that sounds bizarre to most people, but most people don't understand the law of compensation. We're raised with the idea you go to work to earn money. You don't go to work to earn money. You go to work to gain satisfaction. You should spend your days doing what you absolutely love to do. But compensation, think about it. Our compensation comes to us by law. It's based on three factors. The need for what you do your ability to do it, and the difficulty there can be in replacing it. Now, I know you may have doubts. You may think, well, if I do more, I'm not necessarily going to get more. Well, you may not get it from where you're working. It may not come from there. It may come from somewhere else. You say, but the company makes up their mind how much I'm going to earn. No, they don't. You don't get your pay from the company. You get your pay through the company. Your pay comes from an infinite source of supply. You see, we've got a lot of these ideas wrong. And look at if you become bigger than your present position, by law, you must move ahead. That is an absolute law. That's, that, that's the basic law of the universe. When something becomes bigger than the position that it's in, it moves on to the next space. And if your company is not going to give you more, there's going to be a dozen companies waiting in the wings for you to come along and help. The law of compensation is probably one of the most important laws. I would suggest that as you turn this set off, and you stop watching this particular video, ask yourself, how good am I at what I'm doing? Could I get better at it? Could I get a lot better at it? How can I get better at it? Understand this. You've got the potential. You've got more power than you than you will ever hope to utilize. Are you applying it? Who does a better job at what you do than you do? Are you studying those people? Study their lives. Find out what they do. Do what they do. Read the books they read. The more you study this material, the better you're going to get at what you do. But always remember, 
The law of compensation is based on three points. The need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. And as you go through all the material in these laws, and you study the law of compensation, get the material, get the physical material and study it. It's all there. You're going to find that all the way through all this material, those three, three steps keep coming up. The law of compensation is based on what you do. Put the energy out there. Put the effort out. Get better at what you're doing. Say, I am going to get better every day at what I'm doing. And your whole world will improve. This is Bob Proctor.